Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. So next speaker is uh, I lost the Dr. Manoria. Ah, uh, Dr. Manoria. Yes. So Dr. Manoria, yes. stage is yours. Yes, thank you. Are you able to see the slides? Uh, yes, sir, you can see. Uh, Dr. Mahapatra, Dr. Chandrasekhar, Dr. M.S. Hiramat, and Dr. Prabhu. For the next 12 to 13 minutes, I'll be talking on this very interesting topic, plaque preservation by drugs moving ahead. All of us know plaques are the major culprit for cardiovascular disease. They put us at risk of heart attack and stroke. And all of us know heart attack is the number one cause of death and stroke is the number one cause of disability. But today the focus of attention is only on coronary plaques. Plaque preservation implies change in the structure or function of an atheromatous plaque to produce a reduction in the risk of rupture and thrombosis so as to reduce ACS but we are now going a step ahead. We are able to regress plaque also. The last couple of years has witnessed the spectacular advances in the field of plaque preservation, both in terms of finance understanding and in the availability of a panoply of therapeutic options. When we look at the issue of can we stabilize the plaque, the answer is state for a yes. And when we stabilize the plaque, the probability of developing acute coronary events are minimized and we have seen with several drugs. Can we reduce the buildup of plaque? That is, can we check the progression of plaque? The answer is, I guess, very clearly yes. And the third issue is, can we shrink the plaque? That is, regression of atherosclerosis. The answer is yes, as was shown by the glove. But the most complex issues, can we make the plaque disappear at the present time? The answer is no. Will it be possible in the new future? I think Dr. Chan Shekhar and Dr. Narula are better persons for this. We'd like to have their opinion. Now, all of us are quite clear, and you've been hearing that we know the characteristics of the vulnerable plaque, like increased lipid pool, increased inflammatory cells, the fibrous cap is thin, there's reduced collagen, and we know that uh, acute coronary syndrome is caused by rupture plaque in 70%. And out of these, non-stenotic 50% and stenotic 20%. And the non-ruptured uh, ACS plaque are erosion 20%, calcified notable 5% and others. But although we are very clear about the vulnerable plaque, but when exactly a vulnerable plaque will rupture is yes to be evolved out. Now, when we look at the strategies of plaque preservation, uh, we have lifestyle modification, but it's difficult to follow in the long run. Pharmacotherapy is the cornerstone of therapy and mechanical approaches will be delivered by Dr. Ashok Seth. When we look at the pharmacotherapy, uh, the lipid modulators are the cornerstone of therapy, statins, ezetimibe, and PCSK9 inhibitors. AC inhibitors are also useful, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs. Uh, there is some data coming from the Cantos trial and uh, Polchicin, but that is only a preliminary data. Now, statins, as we know, are the cornerstone of therapy for plaque preservation. They are very cost-effective modalities we use in our day-to-day -day practice. And we must realize that the statins have a panoply of multifaceted actions. They improve endothelial function. They delipidate the plaque, as you can see, before statins and after statins. And delipidation can also be seen on NIRS, although this is less often used. But this is data from the yellow trial that statins uh, delipidated the plaque early. Then all of us know the vulnerable plaques are hot plaques. You have seen the pictures. And indeed, statins decrease inflammation, uh, decrease high sensitivity CRP. So they are also useful as anti-inflammatory agents. And they also promote calcification of the plaques. And if the plaques are calcified, they are less vulnerable for rupture. 
Not only this, statins also have pyotropic effects. And as we know, statins uh, inhibit the enzyme HMG coenzyme reductase. They result in decreased synthesis of LDL in the liver, which decreases LDL, and the decreased isoprenoid is responsible for the pleiotropic effect. What is not often realized that one out of 10 plaque rupture culminate into an acute coronary event, and thermogenicity of blood at the time of rupture is a very important determinant of culmination of a plaque rupture into an acute coronary event. And we know dyslipidemia increases thermogenicity of the blood and statins decreases thermogenicity of blood. So in the event of a plaque rupture, a patient is on a statin therapy, the probability of plaque rupture culminating into acute coronary syndrome is minimized. And it is not only the morphology of the vulnerable plaque, as we said, vulnerable plaque is important, a vulnerable uh, blood is important, and vulnerable myocardium is important for a plaque rupture to culminate into an acute coronary syndrome. So focus attention on the other two factors also besides the vulnerable plaque. And mm -hmm. one of the peculiar features of statin is the mm -hmm. legacy effect. Mm -hmm. Scott trial mm -hmm. has shown you take statins mm -hmm. for five years and enjoy the mm -hmm. legacy effect for the next 20 years. Time does not permit to go into mm -hmm. the details. And the reversal trial very clearly shows you can arrest the progression of atherosclerosis by high intensity at or statin. When we are treating patients of acute coronary syndrome, how can we reduce MACE? Reducing LDL by 50% is the baseline, or at least up to 70. Achieving plaque stability, independent of LVL. Improving endothelial function and reducing vascular inflammation. And we have uh, uh, large data on this. This is the Mukashi AM trial, uh, which was carried out with statins and showed uh, improvement. Uh, this is the established uh, study, which again, was carried out in patients with acute uh, coronary syndrome with a torvastatin and the benefit. And this Dharmada ACS, all of you are aware of, that administering uh, uh, high dose 80 milligram 12 hours prior to PCI and 40 milligram immediately prior to PCI, you can see the MACE is reduced, the periprocedural MI are reduced. And this is the IVA study of ZMI plus a torvastatin that also showed plaque regression. And this is the Miracle study, all of you know, uh, which also showed beneficial effects. You can see a 16% reduction in the cardiovascular events, and it is the cardiovascular events, evidence of ischemia requiring urgent hospitalization, which were more decreased, about 26%. The proven study also showed that atorvastatin produces a 16% risk reduction in the cardiovascular events. And is it a my, all of you are familiar with, that is it a my on top of uh, moderate intensity, simvastatin shows reduction in non-fatal strokes, shows the reduction in non-fatal MI, revascularization, but unstable angina was not affected, and so also the cardiovascular mortality. And this is the GLOGOP trial, which very clearly showed that we can regress atherosclerosis, as you can see on the right side of the trial. The statin checks the progression of atherosclerosis. Uh, PCSK9 inhibitors here, evolucumab, produces regression of atherosclerosis. And this is the four-year trial in patients with atherosclerotic uh, cardiovascular disease stable, and you can see a 15% reduction in the ischemic endpoint, MI reduced, stroke reduced, so also the coronary risk. But what is very important is that the curve starts separating after six months, be it primary prevention or be it secondary prevention. And this is the OTC outcome uh, trial post ACS one to 12 months. And again, you can see a 15% relative risk reduction but what is very important to realize is that the curves are separating after 12 months, which means you have to wait for 12 months to get the benefit. If the data is analyzed with LDL more than 100, the curve starts separating early and they have more benefit. Evopex was a trial where uh, uh, PCSK9 ad were administered early in the acute coronary syndrome and they have produced substantial reduction in LDL, 77% versus 35%, but it was not powered to assess the uh, clinical event, but clearly shows that uh, PCSK9 inhibitors can be administered early in ACS. And this is the subgroup analysis of the four-year trial. You can see if you have a qualifying MI less than two years, the benefit is more. If you have a qualifying MI more than two years, the benefit is less. And so also, if you have greater than two prior MIs, the benefit is more. One prior MI, the benefit is less. And polyvascular disease, which means if you have disease in all the three vascular beds, the benefit is more. Three vascular bed is right on the top. The red one is the two vascular bed, and the last one is the one vascular bed. And this clearly established that lower is the LDL, 
more is the benefit. So lowest is best is currently the slogan. Cardiovascular death, MI stroke, you can see as you decrease the level of LDL, the benefit goes on increasing. The last one you can see a 31% reduction compared uh, to the top where the relative risk reduction is much less. Now, these are the guidelines for use of PCSK9 in acute coronary syndrome. To make you still clear, the guidelines say we have ACS, try high intensity statins, wait for four to six weeks, see LDL, LDL more than 55, use ZMI, wait for four to six weeks. If LDL is more than 55, then only you can uh, use PCSK9. But problem here, as you can see, if you follow this strategy, you are already waiting for 12 weeks, uh, four to six weeks after statin, four to six weeks after uh, PCSK9. And you look at the right hand side of the curve start separating in ODC after one year, which means when you follow this guideline based strategy, you will receive the benefit only after 15 months. And we know the incidence of cardiovascular when the mortality is much higher in the first year post ACS. So a plea is made to initiate statin therapy in very high risk patients right at the onset of acute ACS along with statin cisitamide. Uh, the patients admitted to the ACS already taking high intensity statin isotamide, LDL more than 55, direct start PCSK9 inhibitor. This has been covered by the guideline, but the other high risk subset, as you can see on the slide, are not covered. For example, you get the ACS with polyvascular disease. I think we would be reasonable in initiating, uh, initiating PCSK9 along with uh, statins and uh, is it am I? And so also, if we have recurrent PCI in past, patient now gets settled with the ACS, very high risk patients, type 2 diabetes, target organ damage, CKD, CAD, admitted with ACS, or young diabetic in the country, already undergone angioplasty, very diffuse disease, or patient admitted with the ACS with LDL, very high, 180, 200. So although there may be a difference of opinion on initiating ACS at the time of uh, ACS, but it seems quite logical to initiate at least in the very high risk group because the curves in uh, PCSK9 trial, ODC trial, they separate after one year. And we cannot wait. All of us know AC inhibitors also useful in plaque precipitation. If you have endothelial dysfunction, there's an increase in the local mediators, plaque AC increases, and you get all these changes. And if you add Revipril, uh, you can get beneficial effect in the plaque precipitation. Now, Kento's trial was the first trial uh, which showed benefit and was the first trial of proof of anti-inflammatory therapy on top of intense lowering. But although the trial was positive, as you can see, uh, but uh, there is increased risk of infection, is caused, and there are several other issues, uh, and is not a recommended therapy at the present state of time. The reduced trial also showed very interesting data. It was conducted in patients with cardiovascular disease, diabetes with risk factors, LDL 41 to 100 on statins, and high triglyceride 130. And interestingly shows a very 25% reduction in the ischemic endpoint and also a 26% reduction in the secondary endpoint. And uh, the CT Evopex trial showed that there are beneficial effects in terms of its effects on the plaque. More work is required with PCSK9. Inclisran is the new hope for the future and all of us know it was also touched upon in the earlier lecture. It's a small interfering RNA which inhibits the synthesis of PCSK9 and a single dose of 300 milligram decreases LDL by 50%. This remains there for six months. So a two injection per year may be the new regime in future, although the drug is not yet approved, but several trials are ongoing, as we saw in the morning. And PCSK9 is a new therapeutic innovation under evaluation again. A single vaccine decreases by LDL by 50%. This remains for one year. If this comes out to be a real reality, a booster dose every year may be the new way to minimize atherosclerotic events. So what is the take home message? Can we stabilize the plug? Answer is very clearly yes. Can we reduce the plug buildup? That is check the progression of atherosclerosis, yes. Can we shrink the plug? Yes, the glyoid toil. And can we make the plug disappear? I think this is a question for Dr. Chanshekar and Dr. Narula. Will it be possible in future? Statins, zizitamide, PCSK9 inhibitors are the cornerstone of therapy. Incluxan is the new hope for future and so also is the PCSK9 vaccine. And what is the another big message we have learned from LDL lowering is, if your patient has baseline LDL cholesterol above 100, there's a decrease in the mortality. If the baseline LDL is less than 100, less, there's only reduction in the cardiovascular mortality and no decrease in the 
cardiovascular mortality, all cause mortality, as you have seen in the trial of valacumab and elatacumab. Uh, thank you very much.